why hello and welcome everybody it is pox again so today i wanted to go ahead and check out the new uh path of exile league that will be go or going out in i think about two weeks a little bit more than two weeks on the 16th um the official league is called blight i haven't really looked at too much of it i just know that it is a tower defense i'm a big fan of tower defenses myself I'm sure if you guys have ever watched me play Warcraft 3, you've seen UTD on there. Very customizable tower defense. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Blight. A creeping black fungus that feeds on the will of its hosts. Pulsating with toxic blood too dangerous to touch. Too dangerous to ignore. We must drain the eye core of this dark infection. Its mindless husks will protect its core. So I build weapons, towers which conjure flames, chill the air, move the earth. Hmm. Even so, this part looks pretty cool. I need your might, and to the mighty go the spoils. The source of this blight is out there. It's black tendrils reaching for us. We will seek it out and purge it. You know, there's, I want to go back. There's one thing I actually really like about this. Um, it shows, actually you can see, I think while he's fighting, the locations of all the towers with this little icon. I think that's really good because of screen clutter that, you know, you pretty much can't see anything because of screen clutter, so that's really nice. Looks like they're definitely taking, like, the Abyss feature and just touching up on it. The Blight is here. And we are the cure. This is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I wanna talk about this a little bit. So one thing I like about this, and of course a lot of this is speculation because we don't really 100% know yet, but I like how it seems like monsters come to you rather than you go to them. And the reason why I think that's good is Path of Exile is basically on this perpetual loop of power creep and clear speed, meaning you know every league people wanna go faster and faster and faster because in the end, going as fast as you can makes you as much money as you get or you know, capped at your speed and people always want to strive for the best i don't really care about that anymore i'm a casual but you know you get the point when you have something like this it's a bit different because you're more so operating on a time so the monsters are coming at you and you're defending like waves i much prefer that because it opens the door for a lot of other builds to go in and not it's not that they aren't as good as other builds but it makes them feel better when they're designed to fight the league mechanic does that sort of make sense that's one thing i'm so far just Kind of excited for. In the Blight League, Sister Cassia is trying to stop the spread of the mind controlling Blight by destroying fungal growths. When attacked, the Blight commands infected monsters to defend it. The monsters mindlessly follow the Blight's tendrils, only attacking foes directly in their path. The infected are unusually tough, so you will need to build defensive towers to exploit each monster's. I want to try to pause on those specifically and For each see. tendril lane you defend, a chest will appear with your rewards. These rewards can include oils, which Sister Cassia can combine together to enchant certain items. Oh. This is, this is, uh, this is very crazy. This is allocating nodes and, like, big nodes on the passive tree. Blighted maps contain larger pockets of infection. Cleanse these for rewards, including you. Hmm items which can be enchanted with notable passive skills. In Path of Exile Blight, we also have a focus on giving you more control over when you run side content. Master missions now stack for later if you don't run them immediately. That's very good. This for expansion SSF. also contains significant revamps to the Saboteur, Assassin, and Necromancer. Did you see his throw speed? This Saboteur. is... Look at his throwing speed! Significant look, look, watch, 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 watch. Significant revamps to the Saboteur, <laughs> Assassin, and Necromancer Ascendancy classes, as well as an additional bar of skill bindings. I have to say, one of the things that keeps me coming back to PoE, even if I still only come back for one or two weeks at a time every league, is the drastic changes in Ascendancy revalumps they do when they actually do them. So that's what I'm super excited for, is 
definitely playing one of the reworked the six. Uh, ascendancies, like 100%. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other stuff over here. So, um, Path of Exile Blight. Path of Exile Blight, you must stop the spread of deadly blight by building towers to defend against monsters that held its thrall. Uh, let me scroll down here. The Spreading Blight. Sister Cassia is trying to stop... The spread of the mind-controlling blight by destroying fungal growths when attacked. The blight commands infected monsters to defend it. The monsters mindlessly follow the blight's tendrils, only attacking foes directly in their path. The infected are unusually tough, so you'll need... Oh, so you need to build defensive towers to exploit each monster's specific weakness. For each tendril lane you defend, a chest will appear with your rewards. Okay, so this is like you can see what they're building between, and you can see his building resources down here. Okay, cool. Uh, build your own defense. Just close out of this. Uh, let's see. Your chilling towers have increased range. Your arc towers deal increased damage. Your fireball towers fire an additional projectile. You know what's cool about this? This does not rewrite the implicit. It adds a new implicit, which is pretty cool. That's nice. Cleanse blighted maps. Path of Exile's endgame is not safe from the effects of the blight either. Find blighted maps which contain gigantic blight encounters with dozens of lanes and some of the League's most valuable rewards. Very cool. Enchant your items. Uh, among other treasures, the blight yields oils of uh, oils which Sister Cassia can use to anoint your jewelry. Combine two oils to enchant a ring. So two oils, but well, there's three oils here. Two oils to enchant the ring with a potent tower modifier. Combine three oils to enchant your amulet with any notable passive skill from the tree. That's nuts. Golem's blood. That's what 1.8 percent life regen. The 12 oils vary considerably in rarity, with each combination of them granting a different result. You know what I want to do? I want to, like, I want to, like, slam some Karui wards, dude. Are there, can you get, like, quick step on a Karui ward and then vol it for movement speed? Can you vol amulets with movement? I don't even know. Uh, anointable unique items. Four of the unique items uh, exclusive to the Blight League from an armor set that can also be anointed with a notable passives combined with an anointed amulet. The wearer of this set can have up to five bonus notable passives active at once, unlocking countless new build possibilities. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this kind of now, and I don't know if you guys are gonna be happy about this, but like, part of me always wants to play hardcore in Path of Exile because I have more fun. But then when I reach a point where there's just too much screen clutter and I can't see anything and I don't really want to play the game because I know I'm going to die to screen clutter and there's not much I can do about it except not use any MTX and kind of go a bit slower. I think I'm just going to start solo self-found softcore and just play it through and just do what I want to do. Um, because, I don't know, I kind of miss like just, I miss doing a lot of stupid shit in PoE. And I mean, you know, I've been, I've been jumping between hardcore and softcore for now the past three leagues and, uh, I don't really know. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it, I guess. I think, I think like, I can only just really play PoE for, like, two weeks. Maybe push it for three weeks. But I think that if I just play the game exactly the way I want, right? Like, not try to do something weird. Like, just play softcore, play solo self-found, have a build idea, and just go through with it. And I think that's good, right? Especially because this seems like it's adding some pretty nice new content with the tower defense stuff. But we'll see. And this, this seems really nice for solo self found, not forcing you to like, uh, have to do a specific thing on your atlas. The only thing is, I still really fucking hate so many goddamn map bosses in this game because of phase mechanics and then them just like one-shotting you with damage mods. But hey, maybe I'm just bad. <clears throat> We've also improved Betrayal's rewards, made deeper depths easier to access in Delve, and integrated Legion and the boss fights from Synthesis into the core game. Oh. Okay, this is Legion. Uh, I don't know what this is. I've never done any of these bosses. I like that mine he's got, though. I really want to check out some of these mines. 
The Necromancer archetype. Summoners are one of the most popular playstyles in action RPGs. Not in this game, though. Uh, in Bath of Exile of Blight, we have significantly revamped many summoner mechanics and the Witch Necromancer Ascendancy. We have buffed the per-gem level progression of many minion types, added new support gems that allow you to fine-tune minion behavior. That sounds really nuts. Uh, revamped the Necromancer Ascendancy, introduced the Carrion Golem, added a high-level wand base type that can roll powerful minion mods, and have made many other changes. To support all the new skills that are available, we have added an additional bar of skill bindings. Okay, so this is the Carrion Golem, a dangerous new Golem minion that buffs and is buffed by your non-Golem minions. I don't see the additional skill bar, though. Is he just like toggling? Am I stupid? I mean, it doesn't really matter. I trust in GG or GG, so it's okay. All right, where were we? Oopsies, here. Okay, poison and assassin. The poison assassin archetype. So I said I used to play ailment builds a ton in Path of Exile. I'm sure you guys remember from a couple of years ago. When they gutted Ignite and Poison and added this new node called Perfect Agony and made it so you have to scale a specific way, I went full dumbfounded and just can't understand how it works anymore. It just doesn't it just doesn't make sense to me compared to the way we used to play it. But the Poison Assassin, once the most dominant playstyle in Path of Exile, is returning almost to its glory days. Blight adds a new poison themed support gem and a suit of five potent new poison themed skill gems including Cobra Lash, which chains a poison projectile between your foes. The new elusive mechanic, supported by a new Ascendancy Notable, provides a powerful defensive opportunity and a means for escape. Uh, while changes to the Perfect Agony Keystone passive and multipliers for ailments from critical strikes ensures the Poison Assassin gets his mark. Withering Step uses as a movement skill alongside other skills. Alongside other skills, instantly withers enemies around you. Cobra Lash, Cobra Lash throws out a weapon, projectile that chains multiple times between enemies, and then I don't know what this is. I like the MTX though. Here we go. The Mine Saboteur Archetype. We've often received feedback that mines, though strong, felt clunky to use. In Blight, we have completely reworked mine mechanics from the ground up thrown to a location rather than placed at your feet. It's kind of like traps. Mines now deploy more quickly and detonate in sequence. Mine skills now also reward you for detonating long sequences, new and reworked mine support gems, as well as the mobile skitter bots providing new avenues for explosive power. All of these additions are further enhanced by changes to the passive skill tree. I like that and the Saboteur Ascendancy class. We're definitely going to have to check out the new skill tree. Stormblast Mine. This mine makes nearby enemies vulnerable to damage with increasingly powerful shockwaves. See, the only problem with this, though, is, like, being melee is not good. Like, the only way I can see myself going melee as a Saboteur, like, realistically in, like, red tier maps, or even close to melee, is, like... 7 to 9k effective life, 4 to 5, blind node, mind over matter if I can get it with like an extra 2k effective life, plus like something out, maybe like enfeebled temp. So stuff is just way too sketchy to just stand still and tank. That's the problem. Uh, but you know, we'll see. You know, not going to be super skeptical. I trust in Gigi, right? Powerful new items. Uh, alongside the oils, blighted maps, and new jewelry enchantments. Jewelry enchantments? Oh, that's the one we saw. Um, 18 new divination cards, 16 new skill and support gems. That's a ton. Uh, and 16 new unique items for you to discover. In addition, we have rebalanced 24 existing uniques, of which 6 have received substantial overhauls. Gold Iron Point, Enzymite Dagger. Hey, we got like Enzymite Peak and Enzymite Dagger. Plus 3 level of, of all physical and spell, spell gem? Spell skill gems. Huh. Oh, this is the cool minion one. This one you can play minions any way you want, for the most part, because you can get a 100% conversion just from the gloves. 
Minions convert X of physical damage converted to X per slot. So you can just like Verici craft and like force red. Oh no, well it's it's red, yes, so force green if you wanted to. This is a pretty good amulet. It's like clear speed. Faded unique item. Cool. And this supporter pack looks pretty nice. I don't know about this one. It looks pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie, so far. Um little impressed that they're that they're going to mines. That was a big shocker for me. Uh, I, you guys know me, I really enjoy the trap and mine uh, mechanics of the game. I just always feel like sometimes, the mines are good. Fire, like I played Fireball Mines, I don't know if you guys watched me last league. I really enjoyed Fireball Mines. It just literally just kind of shits on everything. But uh, I would like to see like, I would like to really try out these other skills and see how they work. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, the main my main concerns right now with Path of Exile, and I'm not trying to be like super, you know, whatever, but it's just, I really don't like Atlas progression right now. Atlas progression feels pretty shit, um, whether I'm playing SSF or regular, because I don't like feeling like I'm forced to complete maps with the really shitty bosses that just don't do anything. So maybe the goal is just going to be to like full complete my Atlas, and then just not kill bosses that I don't want to kill, and then I'll just have so much sustain it won't even matter. Uh, but, you know, I guess we'll see when we get there, right? Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Let me know what you guys think you're going to be playing on the new release. Uh, also, tell me which supporter pack you think looks cooler, dude. Blue boy or unholy, holy, righteous, undead boy? Um, <laughs> I'm going to catch you guys all later. Don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. And remember, I'm also uploading a ton of content right now for Darkest Dungeon. So if you're curious on that, totally worth it to check out. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.